Hi everyone, welcome to Basic Science Series. I'm your host Lokendar Kumar and today we will discuss Streptococcus pyogenes. If you have seen my previous videos, I've already discussed Staphylococcus aureus in detail and uh, what are the important aspects of Staphylococcus aureus including uh, media profiling, gram staining profiling as well as virulence factors and infections associated with Staphylococcus aureus. After that, I have discussed blood agar and how to analyze the hemolysis on blood agar. I want you to watch those videos because those videos are going to help you to understand further videos, for example, on step, uh, this uh, organism that is Streptococcus pyogenes because I'm going to discuss some of its hemolytic properties. Uh, with that note, let's jump on to the Streptococcus pyogenes. Uh, in this particular slide, what I'm trying to show you is Streptococcus pyogenes is gram positive and it is present as, uh, as you can see here, in chains. So uh, when you have any sample that contains Streptococcus pyogenes, if you do gram staining, you will see bacteria that are present in chains. In this presentation, I will also discuss some of the important virulence factors associated with this organism. This particular organism is responsible for upper respiratory tract infections. Therefore, some of its virulence factors, they are important when you are trying to understand its microbiology. right? So in this particular presentation, I am going to explain the virulence factors I will explain gram staining profiling. Of course, I will also explain the media profiling. I will explain some of the diagnostic tests that are used for the identification of this organism. So I hope the, you're going to like this presentation. And uh, if you like my videos, then please do subscribe to the channel and uh, uh, share this presentation with your, uh, with your friends. Also, uh, if you want to support me, then please uh, spread the information about this channel to your friends so that everybody can get benefited from these videos. And uh, of course, your, your help and support motivates me to make more videos that are helpful for the students in their studies. All right, so with that note and with that request, I will just jump on the presentation part and start explaining my slides. All right, let's start the presentation. All right, so we are on the first slide where I am going to discuss morphology and culturing as well as the blood culture for Streptococcus pyogenes. This particular organism is gram positive cocci. Cocci means the bacterial cell, the shape of the bacterial cell is circular. And it's non-motile, that means it cannot move from one place to another and it doesn't have flagellum. Right. Important point it's, is it's catalyst negative. Catalyst negative means it's not going to give a catalyst reaction. So you can differentiate between Staphylococcus and Streptococcus very easily. If you're confused with the gram staining, you can immediately perform catalyst test and you will know what organism is present in your sample. Another important point that I've written here is one micrometer in diameter the cell diameter of this particular organism is one micrometer, which is uh, equal to the cells that we have already discussed. That is in case of Staphylococcus aureus. Important point is the bacteria present in chains. When you do the gram staining, you will see the bacteria will be present in chains. So that is the specific feature of Streptococcus, also of specific feature of Streptococcus pyogenes. Now let's move on to the blood culture part. If you want to grow this organism on blood culture, uh, that means in this case uh, blood agar, you will see beta hemolysis, specific pattern of beta hemolysis. We have already discussed hemolysis in detail. In, in my previous video, I have discussed hemolysis in detail, alpha, beta and gamma. Here, I'm not going to explain what is beta hemolysis. You should check that video out if you are confused. What is alpha, beta and gamma hemolysis? So right here, I'm going to just tell you that this particular organism is responsible for beta hemolysis, which is, uh, which is going to give you clear zone of hemolysis. And it is responsible for upper respiratory tract infections as well as skin subcutaneous connective tissue infections. This organism is pathogenic in nature. It causes uh, infections 
in humans. It's a human opportunistic human pathogen. And uh, that is one of the reasons that it produces various virulence factors that are responsible for the hemolysis, destruction of the RBCs. So in this slide, I wanted to explain the morphology culturing as well as the blood culture and also explain what are the infections caused by this organism. Now let's move on to the next slide. All right. Okay. So we are on the next slide where I am trying to show you what are the different virulence factors that are associated with Streptococcus pyogenes. Here I have designed this illustration and representing uh, illustration where I'm representing different, uh, you know, these these molecules as different virulence factors, and I've also represented these molecules here. So you can correlate which virulence factor is which. I will also explain uh, uh, one by one these virulence factors, right? So let's start by streptolysine O and streptolysine S. These are the two virulence factors that are responsible mainly for the hemolysis, okay? And uh, streptolysine O also acts as an antigen. Antigen. What is an antigen? Antigen is a particular molecule that is responsible for the immune response, right? The immune response the, uh, can recognize this particular molecule and antibodies can be elicited against this particular molecule. So that is why it is known as uh, antigen. So here, as you can see, I have uh, written that the antibodies against this antigen can be used as marker. So if you are doing any kind of antibody-based testing, you can look for streptolysin O for the detection of this particular organism in any, any system. If you are uh, looking at human or any uh, animal system, you can use those specific ant antibodies, right? Okay, so that is... Point number one, virulence factor number one, streptolysin. And you have two kinds of virulence factors, streptolysin O and streptolysin S. I have represented these virulence factor here with red triangle. Okay, so you need to remember that. Second, <clears throat> pyrogenic streptococcal exotoxins. These are important proteins released by this organism and they are responsible for fever, sepsis and septic shock potent inflammatory response. So what is that, right? So when the organism is present in any system, in this case, let's discuss in human system. If that organism is present in human system, what is going to, what it is going to do is produce these virulence factors. And one of the virulence factors is pyrogenic streptococcal exotoxins. These are the molecules that are going to produce and get released into the system into the bloodstream and these organisms are going to re react with various cells various cells of the immune system and those cells are going to produce effector molecules like cytokines and those cytokines are going to be responsible for the fever sepsis and septic shock and if that inflammatory response is going out of control that is going to cause the destruction of the organelles and that is uh, is the main reason for the sepsis and septic shock. And I've written, as you can see here, I have written that by the production of inflammatory cytokines, this whole whole signaling pathway is uh, operated. If you want to know more about signaling pathway, I have made video on uh, uh, toll-like receptor signaling. You should check that one out. Next virulence factor is hyaluronidase. This is responsible for the degradation of hyaluronic acid. And this particular acid is present in the human cells. If we are taking example of a human cell, these are present in the human cell and they are responsible for the connection between cells. So if you're going to break that connection, this particular organism is going to produce that particular enzyme and that enzyme is going to break that connection. Because it is destructive to the human system, that is why it is uh, it is basically uh, considered as virulence factor. Now, next is DNases. DNases are the enzymes that are produced by organisms like step, uh, Streptococcus pyogenes. It's also produced by many different kinds of organisms. They help in the breakdown of DNA. The DNA molecule is very important for the cell. 
you don't want your DNA to be degraded, but if you have this bacteria in the system, it can degrade the DNA. Next is streptokinase. Streptokinases are the proteins, are the enzymes that helps in the dissolution of the fibrin. Fibrin is the protein that is present in the blood. So as you can see, there are various virulence factors, various effector molecules that are responsible for you know, pathogenesis of this, uh, this uh, disease caused by this organism. So I have listed most of them and uh, I think I can make separate videos on these specific molecules because so much is known and they are responsible for various kinds of uh, functions in in uh, uh, human system, right? Specifically, if you discuss about streptokinases, they are, they are really important. Uh, also, they are important when you use them to treat uh, uh, blood clots. So anyways, I'm not going to go into the detail, but uh, I would like to uh, mention that these are the important virulence factors that are responsible for the pathogenesis of this infection. All right, now let's move on to the next slide and, and let's see what, what I have for you in my next slide. Okay, let's move. Okay, so we are on our next slide where I'm going to discuss lab diagnosis of this particular organism. Point number one is microscopy and culturing. We have already discussed that this organism is gram positive. So if you do gram staining, you will see gram positive cocci, that is the, the circular cells that are present in the sample. Also the cells will be in chains. So that is the specific feature of streptococcus pyogenes. Second point is culturing on the blood agar plate, you will see after culturing on the blood agar plate, you will see beta hemolysis. So two points you need to remember, gram staining and specific features like the chains of the round cells, round oval cells. And uh, the second point is beta hemolysis on the blood agar plate. So these two are the important points for preliminary diagnosis. All right, so second point in this case will be antigen detection. So to detect the antigen associated with this organism, you will, you will perform antibody-based testing. You can perform agglutination, uh, specifically if I say la uh, latex agglut agglutination, coagglutination uh, testing. There are, there are you know, antibody-based testing where you'll see the agglutination or uh, reaction is going on in your, in your slide or in your tube. On the basis of that, you can detect group A, uh, group A antigen specific for Streptococcus pyogenes, right? So this is how you can uh, you can detect on uh, using the antigen-based testing. I will not go into the detail of these testing uh, testing procedures because uh, they are detailed, and I think I can make separate videos on these specific tests. Okay, let me tell you about a specific test that is important. So this test is really important, basitracin disc test. So if you do this test, you will be able to identify between streptococcus pyogenes and streptococcus agalactae. It is important because uh, streptococcus agalactae will give most of the tests, like gram staining will be similar to uh, the streptococcus pyogenes. So it will be hard. But if you immediately do this basitracin test, Basitracin is basically the antibiotic testing. So you will place a small disc containing a small amount of basitracin on the blood agar plate. You will see that the bacteria which is present on the blood agar will show the sensitivity if the bacteria is streptococcus pyogenes. So you can easily identify between streptococcus agalactae and streptococcus pyogenes. So it's very easy test to do and on the basis of that you can differentiate between these two organisms so all right so this was just a brief uh, information on the lab diagnosis i want you to uh, read more about this organism this was just a starter just consider it a starter on this organism so i hope that uh, the information that i have provided in this video will help you to understand streptococcus pyogenes right all right let's jump on to the last slide and we'll just conclude everything what we have learned in this video okay so we are on the final slide, we are, we are going to conclude that what we have learned in this particular presentation and uh, 
The important points that I've discussed in this video, they are point number one is the gram staining profiling as well as the culture characteristic. Important point is it's beta hemolytic and gram positive present in chains. You can see this illustration. Try to remember and you will be good, right? You can easily differentiate between Staphylococcus and Streptococcus on the basis of gram staining. Further, we have discussed the virulence factors. I have discussed the specific virulence factors that are associated with this organism and that are associated with the infection caused by this organism. So that was also important. Uh, so I want you to remember all those virulence factors. What is next? We have discussed the tests, right? We have discussed that you can do gram staining, culturing, and then antigen-based testing using antibodies. You can do uh, uh, those tests and try to identify what are the antigens, uh, if the antigen is specific for the Streptococcus pyogenes. Next, we have discussed the basic tracing test, right? It's important that you, you use that particular test to differentiate between different species of Streptococcus. And Streptococcus pyogenes is basic tracing sensitive. Very important point. So these are the important point that I, uh, points that I wanted to discuss regarding Streptococcus pyogenes. I hope uh, you like the video and uh, if you appreciate the content, then please do subscribe to the channel and share this presentation with your friends. I will see you in my next video where I will try to discuss another organism in detail and slowly, slowly I'm going to go deep into the specific points. For example, I've discussed, I will just superficially discuss some of the important tests, right? Antigen-based tests I haven't discussed in detail. In my future videos, I will just bring a detailed presentation on specific tests that are used to, you know, diagnose these organisms. So I hope you're going to like the videos. And if you like the videos, then please do subscribe to the channel and uh, stay tuned. I will bring more and fascinating videos for, for your, for your uh, microbiology topics. And also, I'm also making videos, uh, on genetics, biochemistry, and related related subjects. So I'll just choose a specific uh, you know topic and 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 make video and do my research on that particular topic and then make the video. So I hope these those uh, videos are going to help you in your studies. So with that note, let's let's just conclude this presentation and I'll see you in my next video where I'm going to bring similar kinds of topic. All right. Till then, take care. Bye bye.